Hey guys, how's it going? It is Travis Mortz with the Forest Hill Film Lab. Uh, today I'm doing a cool video. I'm going to call this one the Camera Store Breakdown. Uh, basically, I've opened up a camera store on Forest Hill Film Lab, and I got a lot, a lot of odds and ends in there. So basically I want to talk to you guys about these cameras just very briefly so you can you know, see for yourself what they even are. Uh, see a closer look at them real quick, uh, you know, so then if you were considering any of them, you know a little bit more about each one of them, and you can make a more informed purchase. Um, and also, you know, I want to I wanna give you guys this, this experience, because you don't get that with KEH or eBay or pretty much anywhere you buy cameras. You never get to see the camera in action in a video or have someone talk about why the hell they even bought it to sell to you. Because, you know, I buy stuff all the time. I flip cameras all the time. So... You know, what compels me to buy something off a shelf? Why do I think it's worth selling? It's basically what this, this video is about. I'm going to explain to you guys what the hell these things are and what they do. Um, and also, uh, the first thing I want to talk about is a new partnership I have with a film shooter owned company um, that supports film and film shooters like myself and like you guys. Um, so yeah, let's get started on this video and uh, I'll tell you guys about my new my new partnership and uh, about some of these cameras in my store. So as you guys know, I am a huge uh, supporter of the film community. It's what I love. It's what I'm here for. I'm here for the film community 100%, um, and I I'm completely stoked about it. So because of that, I'm stoked if everyone else is stoked about it too. Uh, and there happens to be someone else like myself that lives nearby, and his name is Mike Padua. And he started Shoot Film Co., which is basically um, like a trinkets company where they, get, they sell like stickers and patches and buttons and t-shirts uh, to share your love of film, to basically uh, share the fact that you love shooting film and that you support film and that you're a film shooter because that's fucking awesome. We're film shooters. So um, Mike Padua and I have teamed up. I asked him if... Uh, Maybe I could uh, work with him and sell some of his stuff. Uh, not everything. So if you guys see some stuff in my store that you like, there's a lot more on his page at shootfilmco.com. And uh, I suggest you guys go head over there. Um, I'm not necessarily doing this to make any money. Um, I'm basically just doing it because I want to have these products available to anybody who wants them. Because I think they're badass and you guys will probably think they're badass also. Um, so without further ado I'm just gonna show you guys some of the stuff that I ordered some of the stuff that I like I didn't like I said I didn't order everything he has that's you know that's what his stores for um, but I just wanted to order a couple things that uh, psyched me up and uh, might get you guys excited as well so I'm gonna show you them and uh, this stuff will now be available in my um, in my web store as well so you can always add it on with a film order and I'll send it back with your negatives add it on with a camera order and you'll get it in the box with your camera um, it's just a little add-on which is kind of nice because um, you know over at Mike's store this is all he's got and sometimes it's kind of hard to pull the trigger on a four dollar pack of buttons but um, if you're spending sixty bucks on a camera anyways that f extra four dollars on buttons is a no-brainer like hell yeah I want some buttons so um, anyways I'm gonna get you guys I'm gonna show you guys some of this stuff and then I have some other stuff to talk about as well uh, I'm gonna Take a little break because I gotta go switch over to uh, Blix on my C41 processing, and then I'm gonna show you. Guys. Alrighty, so I I got the Blix going, and now I can talk to you guys about some of this stuff. So, um, like I mentioned, I really only bought some of the stuff that uh, like really got me psyched. I didn't buy everything out of his store because I wanted to see how this stuff does. Uh, but I'm gonna start out talking about this patch here. Uh, back in back a few years ago, before Mike even started Shoot Film Co, he made a big Instagram message and he was asking fellow film shooters what they thought about his designs and uh, I was in that Instagram message so from the start of this Shoot Film Co company I feel a little bit connected not like I had anything to do with it but the fact that uh, I was included in the original uh, people and and since day one Mike has like sent me free patches and free stuff and I'm like such a badass dude so I want to I'm really stoked to support him and uh, anyways after he started making uh, designs and stuff is when I started my YouTube and I put out a video about shooting Sunny 16 rule. And uh, I'm not sure if it's just a coincidence, but uh, shortly thereafter, Mike came out with this uh, the Sunny 16 patch and he sent me one for free. He said he knew I'd appreciate it. So because of that, uh, this particular patch is always kind of like, I don't know, I have a special place in my heart because I'm like, this shit's for me. Like, this Sunny 16 patch is meant for me. And it's meant for all of you guys who have watched my video and learned the Sunny 16 rule as well. So uh, 
I only picked up like seven or eight of these because, like I said, I want to feel it out, see what you guys think. But um, this is like my all-time favorite patch that Mike has, aside from his original Shoot Film Co. patch. Um, so this one's really cool. No light meter, no problem. Sunny 16. And I think that's really awesome. So um, these are like eight bucks in the store. Not even a big deal. But it's, it, I don't, you know, it's a way to be proud of yourself. Shooting Sunny 16 is like the most photographer you could be because you're guessing your exposure. So I think that's really awesome. So that's really the only patch I picked up. Uh, the other patches I want were out of stock. Um, and then, so we got that, and then we got these uh, buttons here. So we've got three sets of buttons, and I think they're all pretty awesome, so I picked up each set. The first set has little classic point and shoots on it. Uh, we've got a uh, Contax T2, a Yashica T4, a Ryko GR1, and an Olympus uh, Stylus Epic. So if you have any of those cameras, that's a cool reason to, to own these uh, buttons. I just, I have two of these cameras right now. Well, actually, I sold the T4, but I got a couple of these, so I thought that was neat. Um, the next one is these Polaroid uh, buttons. We've got a Polaroid, you know, the standard rainbow camera. We got an SX70 folding camera. We got a Polaroid 250 LAN camera. And then just the standard Polaroid logo. And uh, I know this video is black and white. Sorry, guys, but you can see all these on my website. They're beautiful in color. Um, so that's all the reason to go check it out so you can see what color these things are because they're really beautiful. Um, and then last but not least, we have the Classic Range Finder series, uh, which is my personal favorite because it's got the most badass cameras in it. Um, so we've got a Leica M3, which speaks to me because I've got one of those. We've got a Canonet uh, QL17 G3. Uh, we've got, this is actually a Nikon S2. But it's got a little bit of SP styling in it, so I like that, the Nikon rangefinder. And then uh, the Brolympus XA, as Mike calls it. Brolympus. So there's those buttons. And then my favorite is the original Shoot Film Code design stickers. Um, he's out of stock on the patches, but I'll be sure to grab a bunch of those once they come out, just so I can cover my bag in them. I'm not even going to make them available for you guys. I'm just going to cover my whole dom key in these things, because I love them. Um, so yeah, the Shoot Film Co. stickers, uh, I picked up a good little bundle of those because I feel like everybody should have one of these. Ingrain We Trust, Shoot Film, it's like such a straightforward sticker, it applies to every film shooter. So go grab some of those. Um, that's what I've got going on for Mike Padua. Once again, I can't thank him enough for um, you know giving me this, this opportunity to sell some of his awesome designs. Um, you know, I, I've never really designed anything myself or made anything like this, so I'm not sure how I feel about sharing it with other people. but. Mike is so awesome about sharing it, so I have to share the love as well. Um, so there we go. That is my latest announcement, is that we are now working with Shoot Film Co. And I am talking to other guys that make their own stuff, trying to get some more stuff in my store, making a nice variety of uh, film-supported brands. Um, but, oh, also, let's get to the next part of this video. I want to talk to you guys about the cameras I have in my store, because... A lot of times when you're buying online, you get to see the camera, but you never really know anything about it or know how it works or anything special about it. So for that reason, I'm going to go through very, very quickly, as quick as I can, like all the different cameras I have in my store so you guys get a little insight about why I bought them, why I think that they're worth even selling in my store, why you should like them, and all that good stuff. So one second. All right, so basically I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the cameras I have in my store and tell you why I even bought these things to begin with and why I thought anybody else would give a damn about them to purchase them. Because that's, uh, if you're a camera flipper, if you, sell, if you buy and sell cameras, um, you're kind of like buying cameras for other people because otherwise uh, you're going to end up with a camera collection like I have um, where half the stuff you buy is for yourself and the other half the stuff you buy is to sell. So. Um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of grab cameras out of this basket. This is the basket of listed cameras that I have currently on my website right now. Um, and like I mentioned, I've been flipping cameras for a long time, you know, just about like seven or eight years now. So um, this is nothing new to me, but it's kind of nice to have a place for me to put my stuff um, as a whole, all of my things. Um, and it gives me the ability to do videos like this because usually I sell cameras like one at a time here and there. And I really only sell the stuff that I think is like worth any 
sizable amount of money. I don't go out of my way to post online a $15 or $20 camera. But in my web store, I do have that kind of stuff because I want film to be accessible to anybody. And you guys can you guys could go to my store with $40 and buy a camera. You could go there with $100 and pick out of the whole damn list, basically, of any camera you want. So um, I try to make this stuff really affordable for you guys and buy stuff that's cool. So let me see. I got this, ugh, this box here. <laughs> So that's a little bit of an obstruction. Let me move it out of the way a little bit. So I'm just gonna grab stuff in here and quickly talk about it real briefly so you guys have a little bit more information from my mouth about these cameras that I'm selling. Um, first and foremost, I picked this guy up the other day. Good old Holga. This is the first Holga I've ever bought. Uh, I'm not gonna put film in it because I don't care for Holgas all that much. But if you're a person who likes the Lomography look, you're looking to get into medium format, or you just like Holgas, this is a great camera. Um, Holgas were recently like discontinued and they said that they were going to quit making them all and then they just came out with like a new version Holga. So because of that, this is considered like the old version Holga, which is kind of cool if you're into that. So there's a Holga. Um, works great. As great as a Holga does. Alright, next thing. We got an Olympus OM-1. This is an excellent all mechanical film camera. The Olympus styling is really awesome because you could, could change your aperture and shutter speed in the same exact spot. Um, and because it's all mechanical, it doesn't need batteries to work. The batteries for this camera are kind of rare and like kind of crappy. All the kinds that they make are crappy, so I'm not really sure if the meter works. I, I would call this a Sunny 16 camera because it does work. The camera works excellent. Um, the meter, I don't know. Uh, it doesn't matter though. The camera works. Um, this particular camera is missing like the quick rewind knob thing that goes here that goes like that um, So it makes it a little more affordable um, I just rewound a roll of film from it and I just turned this thing anyways without even flipping that out and it was super easy um, We've also got a really cool lens on here that unfortunately has some fungus uh, We've got a Bushnell 28 millimeter 2.8 lens super smooth lens Bushnell, obviously, great optics company. Uh, it's kind of weird to have a camera lens made by them, but we know that they make good glass, um, except for the little bit of fungus on here. This fungus you cannot see in the viewfinder, and it probably will never affect your images, ever. Um, but it's there. And also, what comes with this camera, because of that fungus, I decided to throw in this little zoom lens. Brand new 35 millimeter to 70 zoom lens. Um, like brand new, like I came, it came from the box. I have the boxes. I have like a box of these lenses in boxes. So, yeah, brand new lens. Uh, I decided to throw it in there with this camera. Um, fun fact, the last guy who bought the other OM-1, um, I threw one in his box. He doesn't even know it yet, so he's going to see that. But uh, pretty cool. Nice little lens, too. It's really snappy. Um, F-stops are clicky. It's super smooth because it's absolutely brand new. So yeah, there's a little reason to buy that. Even though the Bushnell lens has a little bit of fungus, you're also going to get a really cool uh, mid-range zoom lens. Uh, let's see what else we got. This is a Bolsey camera. It is a small rangefinder. Here's the viewfinder window. Here's the rangefinder window. Um, the focus is here, which is pretty cool. This has a Wollensack lens on there. That lens ain't no chump. So here we go, I can focus on you guys. It's like a split screen rangefinder, so it's really easy to see. Shoot it. Anyways, when you advance the film, it pulls this pin back and automatically cocks the shutter so then you're ready to go again. You never double expose a frame. Um, it's a fun little 35 millimeter camera. Uh, I don't have any results from it, but I will soon once I get this out of here. I just gotta figure out. Oh, you have to lift it. That's what it is. Lift slightly and wide. My mistake. See, you gotta learn something new uh, every day. And I already learned this, but I had to learn it again. So watch. I want to show you guys. Lift slightly and wind. Oh, I'm turning it the wrong way now. Lift slightly and wind. I gotta get attention on my film now, because I... There we go. Okay, watch, watch, watch. Watch the pin drop. Oh, there we go. There we go. I'm gonna take you guys this picture. And now I'm gonna lift slightly and wind. And we're gonna watch that pin drop, cocks the shutter again. 
Bada bing, bada boom. Oh, that was... This is why I'm making these videos, you guys. <laughs> because some of these things are weird and you might never want to play with it, but now you know how it works and it's pretty badass. Um, another weird camera, the Stereo Realist. This camera is like famous in the 3D world for being the 3D camera. It's kind of neat because the aperture blades, or the aperture rings turn simultaneously. I really love that. The shutter dial's here in the middle. And then, here's the weird part about this camera. The button's on the top, but the focusing windows are on the bottom, like this. So I don't know if you shoot it this way, which feels so, like my face feels so exposed. Or do you shoot it this way? Do you shoot it this way and then that feels more natural. That's how I've been shooting it, like this. So that's a cool little camera, nice stereo camera, um, built-in caps. This is like an iconic 35 millimeter stereo camera. Uh, let's see here, we got some Olympus styluses, nothing too crazy, nice little zoom, nice little zoom. Um, you turn the flash off. This is why I buy these, because I like, I like shooting with the flash off. Super quick and snappy, nice little street performer. The Olympus Trip AF30. This is like a little stylus designed kind of camera with the clamshell. And we got we can shoot whatever we want. And the, it's got these little buttons here that you actually have to hold while you press. But it'll do flash. There's our flash. And then if you hold this button while you're shooting, it'll do no flash. Over and over. Look how quick that is. This is an excellent little street point and shoot. Uh, and in daylight, it's probably not going to pop the flash anyways. Because when I point it at my light, it doesn't pop it. So that's cool. It's got DX reader. So you just slap the film you want in there. Really badass little point and shoot. We got another Olympus stylus. Oof. That is a 38 to 140. That one's real long. What's this bad boy? 38 to 170. You can look at your neighbors with that one. Uh, here we got the Canon SureShot 65 Zoom. See, this is another camera. This is why I'm, I'm making this video. Um, this camera is cool because it's got this little like selection dial on the back. And look what we have. A no flash setting. Like I'm, I'm all about no flash settings because then you can shoot outdoors and get crispy photos without like weird exposures. Um, and they're so much quicker with the flash off. Maybe this one's not. Oh, I was zooming. So it's just a little zoomer, but like I said, that dial in the back is what got me. There we go, turn it off. I actually left this thing on for a few days, so that's a testament to its battery life. And the date on here is 9194. So you can make some old photos with it. Um oh, look at this beast. I don't know what to tell you guys about this one. Sports 35. Um, this is a fun little camera. I don't really know. I haven't shot it. I'm not gonna shoot it, but you guys can if you want. It's super cheap. Um, the way that the shutter is cocked is by film actually advancing through here like this. Oh, there it stopped. And, ooh, that's fun. It's just got a little, uh, rotational shutter in the back. Watch it go. You probably can't see it, but it just goes around in a circle. My stepdad's outside driving his miniature truck around for God knows what reason. Uh, here we go. So that is the Sports 35. It's a four frame action camera. That's probably so freaking good at shooting sports. Uh, here we go. Ooh, I found this one just yesterday and I, oh no, nope, I'm wrong. <laughs> I found this one last week. This is the Yashica MG1. This is an auto exposure, electronic rangefinder. Rangefinder window is nice and clean and clear. Um, this camera takes like a special battery. I don't know if I can show you it. I'm not gonna, but um, yeah, I don't have a coin on me. It takes a special battery adapter that you have to like order on eBay and I've never done it because I don't ever shoot these. But this time I did, I ordered two of them. So I was able to test this camera and you can see uh, the light up here is blinking. The damn thing works, look at that. Pretty good. Um, it'll do long exposures, short exposures. There's a quick one, I'm at 2.8. There's a longer one, I'm at F16. Here you go. So that is badass. It does have a little dent in the filtering, but who really cares? 
it still works. You can't put a filter on there. Oh well. Um, but yeah, nice smooth focus. It's really clean aside from that filter dent. But I think it adds character. That's what we call when you have a film camera that's beat up. You call it character. Um, last video I did was about the Olympus Stylus Epic. This bad boy is in the uh, in the store. So go check that out. It's still in there. The Yashica T3 sold in about 20 minutes. So I apologize for that. Here we have the infamous Argus C3. Which is a rangefinder made in Michigan. We got double windows here. Oof, this one's a little bit stiff. It just needs some good loving, I think. But it's a cool camera. Uh, it's the most popular selling camera for about 30 years straight. Uh, very, very common, but they're cool. And they're really nice if you get a good clean one. We've got that. And then also I think I have this version, which is the tan leather version. And this is called the Argus C3 Matchmatic. Um, basically the same camera. I don't even know if it was a nicer version, but it looks nicer, so I think it's a nicer version. Um, it all works. So, nice old camera. This is the kind of camera you shoot if you want interesting results. That's, that's why I buy a lot of these cameras, because some people like shooting weird cameras with interesting results. Um, here we've got a Polaroid Reporter. Man, these things used to be way cooler when PacFilm was still around, but... It's still cool if you have pack film to shoot. A little auto exposure camera with zone focus. The thing that I really like about this camera is unlike most land cameras, they take like a funky double-sided AA battery that has like nine volt contacts on it. It's really weird. Um, but this guy takes two AA batteries inside the camera behind the lens. So because of that, you can see the batteries in there actually. They're right there. So because of that, it's nice because you can just throw some normal batteries in there and shoot it no problem. And that's why I got that thing. I like those because of that. Um, I've got this Polaroid's one step close up. Oh, is it charging? Is there film in here? I don't know. Maybe the United Kingdom. I didn't know that. Let's see if there's film in here. No. I don't think there is. But um, I basically bought this because it shoots impossible film. If you guys like shooting impossible film, this is a great camera for it. Um, the Impossible Project is so awesome. They sell these things for like $140. So it's pretty much impossible to buy that. So uh, if you want one, you can buy it from my site for like way cheaper. What? This light is on on the back. I wonder if it's going to fire. No, I, I don't think there's film in there. I don't know how on earth it's charging up though. Oh, there is film in there. It's old film. So, yeah, I don't know. That's cool. I don't buy impossible film, so I don't know much about it. And that's why I don't really sell a whole lot of these kinds of cameras. But I had one, so I threw it up there. Um, another one on that note, on that same note. Uh, we've got the Polaroid Spectra, which was like the badass camera of the, the 80s and 90s. Oh, I think it came out in 1999, actually. Yeah, it did. Um, but you got autofocus, you got flash, you could do exposure compensation, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, yeah, cool little camera. Like I said, if you shoot the if you shoot the Impossible Project film, this is a great camera for it because they offer that. So that's pretty nice. I'm running out of room over here, I'm gonna put that little clam guy up there. Uh, we've got the Canon T70, which is a uh, it's like an auto exposure 35 millimeter SLR. I have not really shot one of these, but what I read online was that people like them. This is a cool camera because it's like got that old school 80s styling, but it's an auto advancing auto exposure camera. Um, some batteries in there. I don't think I put these batteries in there, so they're a little bit old. But you could change the ISO on here. You could change the mode. There's like three different modes on here, and you got you got to look them up. But there's like program, and then tele, which d does like um, like faster shutter speeds. That's like a look three hundred fiftieth of a second, five hundred. 
So yeah, anyways, that's a Canon T70. This is a cool camera though, because it'll make great images every frame, and that's what we like. That's what we like about uh, film, if we get 36 frames. Here's a cool little Konica fixed lens camera. Once again, it's got like this nighttime mode, so you can turn the flash off. Oh, if you don't touch the button though, it's popping. But yeah, cool little camera. I really just like these three buttons. I thought it was neat. And the fact that it's a Konica. Every Konica I've shot has been sharp as hell. So I'm like, hell yeah, I'm buying that. Um, so yeah, you put it on the nighttime mode and you can shoot. Look how quick that is. How could you resist? That is a great camera. And it comes with a leather pouch, which I forgot to list in my listing. So keep it our little secret. I only got a couple cameras left, guys. I'm trying to go quickly because... Who really wants to hear about all this stuff, right? Here we've got the Minolta Freedom Auto Date S2. Again, it's just a little fixed lens camera. But look what it has. It's got a flash off switch. So I like that. That's why I bought this one. And I like the windows up here. I thought they looked cool. But mostly the flash off switch. It's like got some resistance on it, but I think it seems to be working. Let me put it in the dark. Yeah, and then let's see. And then it flashes when you're not touching it. So that's a cool little point and shoot. Point and shoots are fun. Some guys like point and shoots a lot. Some gals. Oof. So here we've got the Pony 135. This is just a cool little weird camera. Does this lens go in? There it goes. It's got a collapsible lens, so you can put it in your pack pack. <laughs> um... You got focus up here. It is a rain, uh, zone focus camera, so you're going to have to deal with that. Um, speaking of zone focus cameras, I actually have a zone focus camera that I don't have out here right now. I don't know where it went. But if you look at my store, it's called the Ryko 35ZF. It's like a little, it looks like a rangefinder, but basically it's uh, manual exposure, manual aperture, but you zone focus it. Um, so that's pretty cool. That I don't know where it's at, but this is my listed box, so it should be in here. Anyways, this is the Argus C33. It's actually a newer version of the Argus brick. The problem with this camera is that the rangefinder patch is like so dim. Oh wait, am I, was I covering it before? No. I see a rangefinder patch, but it's just not displaying an image. It's just not displaying an image in there, so... I don't know. It's kind of hard to shoot. I would call this also a zone focus camera because that rangefinder patch isn't doing you any favors, and that's unfortunate. But it's still a cool, cool looking camera if you like a shelf piece. So I actually realized that I forgot the Ryko ZF, but I also forgot a couple other cameras. So I went down and grabbed them, and I only have about four or five cameras left, but they're some of the best ones I found this week. So here is the Ryko 35ZF I was telling you about. It looks a lot like a, a Canonette or something. Um, it's got a cool little focusing ring that locks on sp like common distances. We got one person, we got a person standing up, and then we have a mountain. But then in between those distances, it actually has a foot scale, so then there's some sort of relevance to those, to those pictures, you know? Um, also, we've got our aperture here, which is nice and snappy, and then our shutter speed dial here which I think, this is such a cool little camera, the Ryko 35ZF. Um, my buddy Anthony shot this. He's, you know, he takes pictures, but, I, I mean, it's not like shooting a range, or a zone focus camera is really anything to do with photography. It's mostly, can you guess distance? Um, and he shot some great photos on it. And so there's that. Ryko 35ZF. Here's a goofy little camera. I think I took the batteries out of it. Yeah, I did. But it works. Uh, it's an auto exposure, auto advance 3D camera. All three lenses fire simultaneously and then it advances to the next frame. Um, it's kind of a funky little camera that I thought somebody would really like to shoot with that. Um, this is one of the nicer cameras I picked up this week. This is a black, as you can see obviously, it's a black OM-10. Uh, most of them are chrome, like the ones I see. Uh, this is an auto exposure camera. Fun thing about Olympus cameras is the way that their exposure settings work. Um, let's see, I'll put it on bulb. The way that their exposure works is there's actually a small little glass 
photo sensor in there. And the way that these cameras work is that they measure the amount of light reflecting off the film base, and that's how they dictate or determine exposure. So basically, you let you set your aperture, and the shutter speed is fluid to be absolutely perfect for the amount of light needed. So the shutter speeds are not ever going to be like one five hundredth of a second um, in auto mode. It's going to be it could be anywhere from you know two minutes to you know whatever whatever exposure so that's kind of cool it's got like that photo light sensor in there and that is really what i love about olympus cameras the auto exposure ones and they they kick ass because of it um but also the om10 came with an option to have a manual shutter speed adapter attached and that's this module right here that actually comes off and these days, the module, excuse me, my face itch, this, the module is very expensive to buy by itself, but there we go, we plug it, plug and play, and then you can change your shutter speed here manually. There's a quarter of a second, oh no, yeah, quarter of a second, one second. Very nice. Um, so yeah, it's a cool little camera that you can do some cool stuff with, set your shutter speed, or let the camera do it for you. And it's super clean. It's got the nice 518 Olympus lens on there, which is like such a sharp lens. Um, I wanted to talk about, I got two more cameras left for you guys. So here is another great find that I picked up this week. I just got this one yesterday, actually. This is a Canon AE-1, um, fully functional, real nice. I found it in a bag and the bag had like, I, it was dead when I found it, and there was, like, a old battery from 2001 in the bag that had not been opened, so I helped myself to the battery and stuck it in there, and the camera worked, so I am bringing it to you guys. Um, it does have a little bit of shutter squeak. It's common for the Canon AE-1. It's actually a pretty easy fix. You just take it apart, and you, like, grease something up, but I'm not going to do it because I don't like taking cameras apart that aren't broken. Um, so this comes with a 50mm 1.8 Canon lens, which is super sharp, but also I'm including two extra lenses with this camera because I believe that if a camera comes with extra lenses, I should sell it with extra lenses. So um, this is a Focal 135 2.8. It's a little off-brand lens, but that doesn't mean it's not going to be sharp. Um, so there you go. That's a nice 135 portrait lens. Super nice lens to shoot with. And then, and this is a really clean one too. The optics are nice and clean. And then we've got this Albinar 28mm 2.8. So you also have a wide angle lens with this Canon. Wow, what a nice outfit. That is a, that's a cool setup right there. Um, if you're looking to get into the Canon AE-1 anyways, that's a great reason to do it. Um, and then the last camera I have to show you guys, actually I put in here, because uh, I had to cut clips, but um, this is my find of the week. I'm so excited about this. This is a Kiev 4A. This is a Contax 2 copy uh, made in Ukraine. And let me tell you, wow guys, this camera is so freaking clean. The, the rangefinder is super easy to see through. The lens is really smooth to focus, so I can focus with my finger and not have to worry about it being stiff. Um, the aperture ring is nice and snappy, like, oh, look at that. Snaps to each aperture, each f-stop. It feels like when you're driving a stick shift and the stick, you know, the shifter goes into the right gear. That's what it feels like. That's how good that feels. Um, all shutter speeds are accurate. We've got the dial right here. The uh, everything just looks so freaking good about this camera. I am really juiced on this one, and I I am excited for the person who picks it up because this is a really fun rangefinder. And having owned a Contax too. I can really say that the uh, the experience of shooting this camera isn't going to be any different at all. Like the build quality, um, you know, internally it might be it might be cheaper build quality than the Contax, and optically this is the Jupiter 8 lens. It's not a Carl Zeiss lens, but this lens is iconic in its own way. It's special, and it's these things are super popular right now. Um, so yeah, that is the Kiev 4A Contax copy. And like I said, the experience of shooting this camera 
is not any different than shooting the contacts. Like you're not missing out on anything, and I could say that from personal experience because I have owned, I own a, I, there's currently a contacts two in my house right now, so I can say that uh, with confidence. So there's the Kiev 4A. Um, and yeah, that about sums it up. This is all the stuff on my website now. Um, like I said, I went down and picked up the stuff that was missing. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. Like I said, when you're buying a camera online on eBay or KEH or wherever you buy from, you really never get the experience of someone explaining to you how it works or what it does or what may or may not be special about it. Um, so I kind of wanted to do this video for you guys so I could show you some of these little odds and ends cameras that I thought were neat that you might think is neat also. Um, and in addition, I showed you guys the Shoot Film Co. patches or badges and all that good stuff. So um, that's in the bottom of my store as well. Go check it out. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. This is a little longer than I hoped, but that's what happens when you have so many cameras to talk about. And uh, until next time, you guys, thank you so much for watching and keep on shooting.